we do, but God, we only do it because, Lord, you have saved us, oh God. Amen. And God, we take not for granted. So, Lord, today as we come, we just praise you. We present ourselves to you. We present our everything to you that you pour out afresh on us, Lord. Oh, God, it, it's so much going on in our world, but, Lord, you don't want us to focus on the world. You want us to focus on you, oh, God. Ref just pour out fresh and anew on us, Lord, your Holy Spirit, so we can set this world on fire for you as the early church did. Oh, God, we don't want to be the same. We don't, we don't want to, Lord, just walk in, 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 in the flesh and do the things that the world's doing. We have to live here. We are in the world, but we're not of it. Amen. So, God, be glorified today. Lord, move Theo out of the way. Move flesh out of the way, God. Bring your word. Bring your word with power. And, God, bring your word. Pour out your spirit, spirit fresh and new, Lord, so that we not only receive your word, like we usually do, but with power, with fire. Yeah. Amen. Mm, pierce our hearts, God. Amen. Mm, wake us up, shake us out of what we've been in, Lord. Get us out of our religious stupor that we've been in, but God, pour, us, pour out fresh anointing on us that we'll go out of here and change this world, Lord. He said, no, they ain't no church. They don't go to church. They are the church. My God, what's going on with the people over there? Woo! We want to be used of you, God. Our life, our lives are not our own anymore. And we forget that. God, we all like peace and comfort. We all like things that go our way. But God, your ways are higher than our ways. You saved us for such a time as this. When everything going around us, all hell breaking loose, God's people at peace and said, listen, peace be still. God's people say, I'm not moved by that. God's people say, I want to show this world what Jesus looked like. I want my neighbors to know. I want my school to know. I want my friends to know. I want commercial establishments to know that God is alive in us through his Holy Spirit. We are different kind of people. So Lord, just shake us today and remind us of who we are. What we're called to do. Allow you to have your way. Mm, God, it's so easy for us to fall into everyday Christianity. Oh, God, we can say the right words. <laughs> we can quote it, Lord. But God living it, that's a different thing. That's a different level. That's a different level. See, I'm not comfortable going to certain places and doing certain things, but, but with the Holy Spirit in me, that flesh have to obey and go do as you call. Help us, Lord, get out of this comfortable stuff we're in. Mm, glory. Have your way, Lord. Be glorified today. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be used of you, God. Move, Theo. Speak, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. It's so good to be here with you. Amen. So glad. Oh, man, your pastor, good friend, man, that's my friend. I always call, I always said Moses. I try to do like God. I always said, when I call him and I talk to him, he knows I said Moses. <laughs> Amen. Bless God for, for Pastor Moses' family. My wife Linda's here with me today. She's uh. Amen. Amen. I might give me a shirt like Moses got. It says, it said, Jesus, Meredith, and coffee. And so I get me one that says, Jesus, Linda, Lydia, our daughter. Now going to be our granddaughter. And the dog didn't mean. 
Amen. But I want you to know something today. I want you, this is going this going this going to blow your mind because this is how God operates. This is how God operates. Oh, hallelujah. I saw some of y'all eating and drinking. I said, good boy, we're going to be here a while. I'm glad y'all got your stuff. <laughs> Woo! See, because when the Holy Spirit takes over, you forget about all that other stuff. <laughs> you picked the wrong day to come, didn't you? You forget about all that other stuff that the world is putting on you and the world is holding us up. See, Christians, we good folks. See, we, we, we go about doing our business every day. We try to be good and we got our bumper stickers and we, got our, we, we try to be good Christians, good Christians. And we know where. What about God say, I want to change your whole life. I'm going to shake you up. I want you to go do something. I want you to deal with some people you don't even like. What? No, God ain't me. That ain't my calling. <laughs> no, no, God said, so you belong to me. So I do what I want to do in your life. Woo, y'all just don't know how God works. Now, that song up there said, come Holy Spirit. And Pastor and Moses up here, he's up here reading Acts chapter 2. Now, when we talked about me preaching, I never talk to people about what I'm, I don't know <laughs> until God gives it to me. In fact, I talked to some of you this morning, which is something I never used to do. When my 20 years of pastor, I never even talked to, I wouldn't even talk to my wife when I got up on Sunday morning. Don't even talk to me. I go somewhere and get in my car and be by myself. I don't want to hear nobody but God. I'm a little older now. I can talk to you and, you know, but he got up and read scriptures in Acts chapter 2. He don't know that's what I'm preaching on. We never talked about it. Had no idea. Who did that? That's God. He don't even know that's where I'm preaching. Acts chapter 2. Huh? But that's God. That's God. And by the way, I'm going to just give this quite this quick uh, uh, advertise. Y'all used to add. Y'all watch TV. See, you, give, you get two minutes of TV and you get 55 minutes of, of ads and advertising. So I'm going to give you a free one. Y'all blessed to have the man and woman of God y'all got here. Y'all, y'all man, sometimes, y'all, how long you been here? How long, long y'all been doing this? See, we get complacent as Christians. We get used to a certain thing. It's like our spouses. Sometimes we take for granted. We take God for granted. But I'm going to tell you something. That man, his family, has been faithful here. I'm going to tell you something now. I'm going to tell you something. I, I passed a 20 year, and I retired. Past, he Moses, you can't do that. <laughs> I got years worth of cassette tapes in my garage and people out there take that stuff oh that's just the pastor preaching you don't understand that's under the anointing you got a man and woman of God you got people here that God has placed here and it's hard but there's a joy to it when God has called you to do it but sometimes we take it for granted don't be surprised God snatch them up out of here and take them somewhere. Now, I'm just, I don't know. I ain't know I told me nothing. Well, the Holy Spirit ain't gave me that yet. Okay, so anyway, today I'm going to share the word. I'm just saying that to say to you that uh, oftentimes that uh, when you call to do this work, uh, people, Christians do, they mean well, but sometimes forget that when a person is called to do this, when you call to do this, if you ever find anybody who just want to do this, run from them. Everybody in the Bible, but God said, Moses, you're going, oh, not me. Because this is a special, it's a calling, people. And we all have a calling, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. But I want you to know something. When God has placed someone here to do what these folks do, and do it faithfully for 10 years, I ain't done nothing. Well, y'all, the only thing I've done faithfully for 29 years is been married to that woman, and she tried not to remind me because I think about it. And she said to me, we first got married, if I had known you were going to be a preacher, I wouldn't have married you. <laughs> I didn't know. I tried. I didn't want to do it. Because somehow she intrinsically understood that God's going to take you on some roller coaster rides that you ain't signed up for. She said, I wouldn't have signed up for that. Me neither. Me neither. I was telling some of the folks this morning, like I said, I don't usually talk to people before I preach, but I got where I can do it now. But, but I was telling, sharing uh, experience when I was in the Army in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, when the police almost shot me. 
I'm a good guy. I've never done anything wrong in my life. Well, I did a lot, got a lot of speeding tickets. That, that, <laughs> but I was almost shot in a grocery store one night because they said somebody, some black guy robbed a, robbed a grocery store. And uh, I was in the store. I was just trying to get out so I can go call the police and say, hey, man, I see this going down. So I couldn't get out, so I hid. And when I said, I'm going to stay here, the police come, so they'll, they'll save me. And as soon as they came, I heard the radios come in, and I said, oh, man, I'm glad y'all hit it. Freeze! I had about nine revolvers pointing at my head. I ain't never committed a crime in my life. I ain't never thought about committing a crime. It was something about jail and me. I, I just didn't like it. I didn't like that sound. I'm funny about bracelets. I don't wear them now. I barely wear them. Why sometimes? But my point is, I've never done anything wrong in my life. I was a captain of the United States Army with a top secret security clearance. Yet, they almost blew my head off. I'm just saying that to say, I didn't know God, but he knew me. I was, that Paul the apostle said, I was chief of sinners, but God said, ain't happening. Got my hands on you. I got a future for you. But culture would have had the wrong black man shot. All of them, they shoot, all of them, they shoot. <laughs> you know what's going on in the world, I know what's going on. I want you to just allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you about it. I ain't here today to tell you about that. I'm here to tell you, I'm here today to refresh you and to to, to encourage you, to, to help you see God in a different light. Amen. Sometimes we think we know. <laughs> and the more I find out, I don't know nothing. Get a little, we get a little word in us. If we get a little word in us, boy, we're going to go tell somebody. We're going to go teach somebody. Then we're going to go, we gonna go judge people. We don't know nothing. Better, de better depend on the Holy Spirit every day to tell you what to do, how to do, who to go to, who to stay away from, how to do. Hey! All the stuff in culture, just peace be still. Let God speak to your heart. Coronavirus, rioting, people getting killed. Fear, 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 fear. I'm not saying, listen, you, I, we go out to Walmart wearing my mask. Why? Because you know what? Corona is real. But I remember when Moses told the people of Israel, I'm putting this blood over your door. Woo! That's all right. He by red. See, he ready to run for the gospel. I see, I like that. See, kids, kids, kids ain't born with no prejudice. They ain't born with no fear. They ain't born with no intermission. They say, hey, he's, I'm hearing this word, man. I want some more of that. <laughs> but my point is, we don't have to be enslaved to all the stuff that's going on. We in the world now. We got to live here. I go out to Walmart, put my little mask on. If I don't remember, my wife will remind me. Why? Because just like in the Passover, Moses told putting his blood over your door so the death of the firstborn won't hit your house. So listen to God. Do what he tells you to do through his Holy Spirit. You're going to be fine. Don't ignore it. Well, I'm just, bless God, I'm just, okay. Okay, we're going to have our church serve with 2,000 people. We ain't worried about it, okay? That's all right. You just get to see Jesus before some of us do. Nothing wrong with that. Jesus, I'm coming. Here I am. So today I want you to, if you will, try to bear with me. I, I, I pray this morning that you're not in a hurry. I'm not saying I'm really going to be all day. I'm just saying that I found that uh, uh, when we are alone with God, and hopefully we're doing that on a daily basis. Man, I, it, you know, I got a, my devotion called Jesus Calling. He said, listen, man, we got to get still before God and don't, and don't rush this time. When you're with him, when you're in the, don't rush. See, when we rush in and rush out, we don't get very much. And here, when we come on Sundays, we don't have the time to give you all of what you need. If you did, we eat, come back, go do something, come back, because there's so much that, but, but when you, whoo, when the Holy Spirit takes over, he with you all the time, see. Y'all don't know it yet. But if you're here today, and you saved, you got something in you that you don't know about. 
you got to let that thing come alive in you. Are you hearing me today? If you ain't, if you ain't there and you ain't saved, we're going to talk later. We're going we gonna to pray for you. But, but when, when, when something's alive in you, <laughs> you feel him, don't you? You feel him, don't you? She said, I feel him and I want him out. Come on, man. <laughs> Amen. I said, I'm retired from preaching. I'm going to go be a comedian next. So, and, and so I want you to know today that, and let me get into the word. Let me get into the word. Help me hold the spirit. Help me to stay on task. That's why I have to, you'll hear me often say, and I, when I was one of the pastors at Trinity, I preached, I always, people always like to say, oh, that pastor Theo said, help me hold the spirit. That's because I'm attention deficit. Holy Spirit has to re- bring me back. And also when I preach, I kind of like a little interaction. Now you, you, you ain't got to say amen, but when the Holy Spirit hits you, you're going to do something. But also be alert. See, I got a couple ways. I learned some stuff in pastoring. I learned how to, how to deal with people. See, people hard to deal with. Sometimes. Man, she bite, as they say. But listen, when I'm preaching and I'm giving you scripture, I'm going to do a lot of scripture, but you need to write it down so you can come back later and do some background, but don't be surprised when I'm preaching. And I call some scripture out and say, somebody read that for me. Because see, if I stop and read all the scripture, I lose my voice quicker. So y'all going to have to help me. Okay? Amen. Church ain't, hey, we ain't come to church. We are the church. So you come and say, oh, man, you can come watch the pastor burn because we're going to fire, man. But, but catch some of it. Get it. Get in it. I'm going to say, Yeah. Such and such. Somebody read that for me. Boom. There you are. Y'all with me, right? Yeah. All right. I'm going to begin my scripture reading. You know, all the stuff going on in the world. We say, oh, my God, what is it? Lord, I, how should I handle it? You, you know what? You know what? Even in Old Testament, I'm going to talk to you about the Old Testament and New Testament, and I'm going to do, do my very best to make it clear. Well, not me. Holy Spirit's going to do it. But today I want to talk about the power of unity. John, good preacher John was here last week. I said, oh, John, man, that John, good guy. He talked about unity. Well, I'm going to talk to you a little bit today if I have to give you a subject on the power of unity. The power of unity in the body of Christ. The power. The power of unity. The power of unity can overcome division. See, because the enemy come to kill, steal, and destroy. He want to come and divide us and make us think that. But, but you're black, so you're different than white. Yes, 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 to a certain extent. But I promise you, if, any, if we took the knife and started cutting people right now, all of the blood looks the same. You, you volunteer to be first? Give me that <laughs> knife over there. Brother said, don't you look at me. I know you're crazy, man. <laughs> but the power of unity, the power of unity. <laughs> I'm gonna, my main scripture is the, books of Acts, the book of Acts, chapter 2. We ain't talk about this. I don't talk to nobody about what I'm preaching because I don't know what the Holy Spirit give to me. But the preacher came up here and read. I almost jumped out the bench. My wife looked at me. I said, baby, you know what I'm preaching? She didn't even know. She don't know. <laughs> Man, my wife never know what I'm preaching on. I used to embarrass her so much. I used to, I, I, sometimes I preach, man, I got up there one, a couple of times and I, and, I, and I had shirt and stuff all cut up. Yes. You heard about that? I you remember? I I, did I do that here? Yeah. Oh, Jesus, help me. Oh, Lord. You the only one still here when I did that? Man, the first time I did, oh, God, people. The first time I did that, my wife just ducked her head to shame. She said, oh, God. She didn't know. I looked all good when I left the house. When I got preached, I looked all good. And I started telling about people how, how we look on the inside and shirts all tore up, my socks were her. My wife went, oh, my God. Yep, 29 years. She's been doing, putting up with this stuff, man. She must love me and she's crazy one. I don't know. What you mean. So, I'm going to do most of my preaching in the book of Acts. Chapter 1 and 2. Okay, I won't do the whole thing. I'll just uh, I'll skim. But I want you to know that, first of all, in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, 2 Chronicles, now I told you I'm going to sometimes ask somebody to read for me. 2 Chronicles 7 and 14 is the Old Testament, as you know. And God's people, the Israelites, were having a hard time. It wasn't having a hard time because they were having a hard time because they'd been disobedient. See, something about God's people, something about humans, is that when God bless us, we get lazy and we start doing other stuff and we get pulled off. 
And God said, okay, you doing that? Okay, go ahead. I know how to get your attention. I know how to get your attention. See, 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 every time the Israelites, uh, God's chosen people, when they obeyed God and did what God said, they had victory. I mean, literally in some of the wars, and, and, and they, they, they get in the fights with the enemy. As soon as they, you know, they raise hand, Moses, they raise a hand, and God bless them. But when they did well and obedient to God, they always prospered. The problem came is when we prospered, we walk away from God, say, so I don't need God no more. I got Visa and MasterCard. I ain't got to worry about God. Huh? I got money over there in that bank. I ain't, you don't know the bank might go in tomorrow. Go on. But, but we, something about human nature is that when we're satisfied, we satisfied, do, we don't do the stuff we need to do. So we take God for granted. We take, you know, we take stuff for granted. So God would have to get people's attention. Second, I'm sorry, did I say second Chronicles? Chronicles? Second Chronicles seven fourteen, and somebody's reading that for me. What did it read? Woo! Sounds like right now, what God's people ought to be doing is humble ourselves, pray, turn from our wicked. Ways. Come on, America. Stop being wicked. Turn. God's people, show them how to do it. God's people, I'm calling you, show them how to do this. Show them how to do it. You begin by prayer. You go in your prayer closet and begin to pray like you never have before. Repent. Pray. He said, because if my people who are called by my name will what? Oh, myself. It's hard for us to do that. We know everything. We know everything. We got an answer for everything. Even now on TV, what's your opinion? What you think? He said, my people, I'm a themselves. My people. My pe he didn't ask the heathens. <laughs> he said, the heathens all get together. He said, my people who call by my name will honor themselves and pray. He's out here. And turn from them wicked ways. I don't like you because you're black. I don't like you because you're Hispanic. I don't like you because you're white. I don't like it. Get real. Who you? Who you think you are? Get over yourself. Hmm? And when you talk about heathen, we talk about Christians, we talk about God's people. They weren't called Christians then, but they're God's people. Humble yourself. He'll heal America right now. Now, if we don't know America's broken, wake up. I don't have to look at TV to know that. Huh? It's broken. Messed up. My wife and I say, every system in America is broken. It is. It's been that way a long time. A long time. But if God's people, let me move on because I got a lot of scripture to cover. They say, yeah, he sure going to keep us here all day, all right. Forget about the time, man. Do like I do. Get rid of some of them watches. <laughs> I used to be in the I used to be in the church. They had the they had the clock set. The preacher had the clock set because he know what time the preacher want, people want him to stop preaching so they can go eat. Right? He put the clock on the front seat. Pew! I go turn that thing around. I'm preaching. And you know I preached long as long as the Holy Spirit was pouring it out. The people just go ahead, man. More. Why? Because in church we get to. Our program, we get used to certain things. We don't train our stomachs to get hungry at certain times. So that preacher gets, he talking too long. Well, if you stay and spend time with God every day, you don't have to preach so long. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. Because you get it. You get it. You get it. You Holy Spirit dealing with you every day. Yeah, preacher ain't got to say much. Oh, God, they just so ready. And you be, okay, man, we, we done. We good. But we only got this much time to pour into you what God has put in us to pour into you. You understand why? That's why I use scripture. That's why I do interaction. That's why I say, boy, I got to hear more. I got to read more. I didn't know that was in it. You know, we think we know the Bible. I thought I knew the Bible. And then the Holy Spirit showed up. I said, oh, man. Oh, man. I've only been doing this Bible stuff for 30-something years. I thought I knew something. Holy Spirit said, boy, let me show you something. 
No, you thought you knew. You know, man, let me go on. Let me go on. I even got a little education. I got a bachelor's in history and political science. I understand what's going on in the world. I understand that. I got a, a half a master's in seminary. Why do I have half? I got halfway through, and I said, I ain't doing this no more. <laughs> you folks lying to me, man. Where Holy Spirit help me? They started teaching stuff in seminary. I said, this ain't right. That thing vexed my spirit. I get out of there. <laughs> they told me God was a sheep. Yeah. She said, Why, what's wrong with you? We should be gender, you know, just sheep. I said, I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out of here, boy. Seminary going wrong. Seminary going to the cemetery. <laughs> I'm getting out of here. You go to the people, young people go to seminary and come out dead. <laughs> With a master's in theology or divinity. Now you're ready to go preach and teach God's people. You ain't ready to do nothing but help people find hell again. Did I say hell in church? Oops. I ain't no polite Christian. <laughs> God ain't done with me yet. He's still working on me. Amen. So thank you for that second Chronicles. If my people who called by, we in the Old Testament, if my people were called by my name, see that still applies to me. We, we got to understand who we belong to. We ain't going to church. We are the church. And, and oh God, that ain't nothing now. That's Old Testament. That's Old Testament. See, most of us here, we wasn't in the promise of the Old Testament. Moses back there, well, he he born Jewish boy. <laughs> I said, I met him. I said, this boy Jewish. What? I ain't never known nobody Jewish. I bet I ain't know they were. But but Jewish, he really is. But the promise was for them, and even they knew better. They, he said, my people call by my name. That's Old Testament. We weren't even included in that. We're we going to get that over. All right, here we go. Now let's fast forward a little bit to the New Testament. If somebody, Matthew 18, 18 through 20. 18, 18 through 20. Now I want to show you what Jesus. Matthew is the first of what? The Gospels. It is the first of the Gospels. Now I want what Jesus said to his disciples, see. Because... He wanted the disciples, his followers, you and I, disciples, and not just go to church Christian. See, we, we done got so, in America, we, you know, our country, and I ain't been nowhere else but Guatemala, mind you, but I read stuff and I see stuff. And I remember where I got tied up with these folks out here in a ministry called Rafiki. They minister in 10 African nations, headquarters in Eustis, Florida, of all places. And boy, I spent two hours with them folks on Friday. I come out of there like a light on my head, like Moses when he come off the mountain. I'm like, my God. My God. I've seen pictures. And do you know there are places in the world where people, Christians, uh, they go lay hands on the dead people and they're getting up? You see, you're crazy, man. Come on, what is that? See, we think Christianity, we think this is it. I predict in about 20 years, people are going to be coming from Africa to the mission field here because they believe. Miracles happen. They believe what God says. They move by the Holy Spirit and the, the stuff happens. We still wait for stuff to happen. So, somebody read for me. Matthew 18, 18 through 20, please. Somebody got it. Thank you, sister. See what I'm saying? He said, if two or more of you together, I'm with you. And you ask them, we're going to do it. If two or more. So we're gathered in his name. Now, in the Old Testament, he said, my people call by my name. Now, in the New Testament, he's saying what? If two or more of you together, and you, you agree, we agree on something, we bind something, 
It's bound. Heaven and earth, it's, by, it's done. What are you saying, preacher? See, there's power in unity. He wants us to understand that his people have the power. He gave us the power and the ability to say, speak to things and to do things, and it will be done. So if in the Old Testament, his people will humble themselves and pray and, 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 and they will turn from the wicked ways, he'll heal the land. Now Jesus is saying, whatever. You agree on. He talking about who he talking about. He talking about Christians, believers, followers of Jesus. He said, I'm giving you something. If you'll use it. This land will be healed even now. He said, but we're just in a little church out there at, 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 at uh, Revolution uh, next to Home Depot and Dog Place. Who, what can we do? Well, what can we do, man? We're just a little old church. It used to be a lot more of us. Now it's fewer and then back, come and go up and down, and that drives a preacher crazy. You hear me? You pour out your heart, your life. You give up everything for the sheep. And then sometimes they come, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they leave. And the worst thing that grieves a, pre a pastor's heart is when people leave, you, your heart is broken every It's like your kids going astray every time. And it tears your heart up. My first 10 years of ministry, I was so hurt and so broken and so messed. And my God said, boy, the people are mine, the word's mine, and the results are mine. You just keep doing what, what, what I told you to do. That man, he, he faithful. Tell me I can't retire. Come on, man, you better come over here and help me. You can't retire. <laughs> But Jesus said, but Jesus said, now nah, that's what he did. Wasn't that, wasn't that the gospel of Matthew you read, sister? Matthew 18, 18 through 20. He said, this is the power you have when you're together. And he was talking to his disciples. He was talking to those who were following him, who said, as Peter said, I don't care what the rest of them do, I'm going to follow you, even if they kill me. And you know what happened to Peter. Oh, peppermint socks, Peter, we call him. He said, I don't care what the rest of them do. I ain't going to never leave you. Peter said, I don't know him. Sound like some of us? Oh, I'm a super Christian. I'm a, I am don't know him. Let, 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 the, let the pressure get too hard. I don't know who? G, G, who? Oh, you talking about Jesus? <laughs> I don't know the man. What am I saying? Jesus was telling them that you're going to have this kind of power in you. You're going to have this kind of power. You don't have to go there. Nobody don't have to read, but I want you all to read John in the 16th chapter and stuff. And you talk about the coming of the Holy Spirit. You don't have to read it now because I'm getting ready to go on the Acts now. Because I want you, I'm setting up the stage about the unity in the body. The power of the unity. Power of unity. Even in the Old Testament, he said, my people are called by my name. In the New Testament, Jesus said, look at here. If y'all come together and y'all agree on this thing here, it's going to happen. Huh? We need to come together in revolution in this place and agree that this mess in our country is going to stop. This mess is going to stop. It stops with our generation. It stops now. This mess stops now. You ain't gonna be shooting and killing people because of how they look. We ain't gonna keep going through this mess. God's people. We're gonna say, oh no, oh no, this ain't happening no more. But who are we to do that? That's what Moses said. And what God did with him. Free them people. 400 years of slavery, he set them free. Why? Because God told him to go do it. He telling us is two or more, if we gather together, we agree on this thing now. Let's not be crazy. Let's agree on it. See, to agree with something, first of all, we need to agree with God's word. And we need to understand the power of God's word. Huh? Well, let me not get caught there. Help me, Holy Spirit, stay on task. Acts chapter 1. Go there with me. I'm going to read now. Because I got the big print, now I can read. Help yeah, me, thank you, Lord. The book of Acts. The beginning of the church. The book of Acts. Oh, I love this thing. Moses skipped on to chapter 2, which is where I want to spend my time. But, but chapter 1 gives you a setup. Acts chapter 1 said, the former account I made, this is the Luke writing it, 
He said, the former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. I'm reading from the New King Version, King James Version. Yours, yours may be a little different. He said, until the day in which he was taken up after he through the Holy Spirit. Can somebody say the Holy Spirit? Through the Holy Spirit had given commandments to the apostle whom he had chosen. To whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs. Being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them excuse me, not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. That's why I say you don't have to read John 16 and John 20 now. Just go home and read that thing. When he said to him, hey, things going to happen. You can't even understand it now. You won't remember. He said, but when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, he going to teach you. He going to remind you everything I just said. He said, it's to your benefit that I leave. Jesus, they're going to kill you. No, 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 go. Don't let them do it. Oh, I'll stand in front of them. Oh, Jesus, don't go. We got God. Life is good with you here. He said, I got to go. They want Jesus to stay with them all the time. Why? So Jesus can feed them. So Jesus can heal them. So Jesus can stop the problem. They really want Jesus to help them get rid of the Romans. <laughs> the soldiers, the government, and them old Pharisees, and Sadducees, and Buddhists, whatever they were. But they were parasites. Right, there you go. Because they were religious leaders. Religion don't save nobody. People say, I'm not tired. Just a whole lot of religious people. They ain't do nothing for you. Anyway, so <laughs> he told them in John. He was sitting with them disciples, touching flesh to flesh. He, just, he said, listen, I got to go now. He said, but I ain't going to leave you comfortless. I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm not going to leave you. I know you used to me being here. I know you used to me seeing me. I know you used to me doing miracles. He said, but I'm not going to just leave you like that. I'm going to the Father, and I pray to Father, and he's going to send you another comforter and helper just like In the Old Testament, God used the prophets and he used people. And he, he, he said, listen, judges, he said, listen, my people are called by my name. Now in the New Testament, Jesus said, look at here, man, let me tell you something. I'm, I'm doing something. I'm with y'all. I'm going to leave you something. He said, and whatever you ask for and whatever you agree on, I got you covered. But I got to go away now. You, you hear what I'm saying? See, Christian said, oh, if I'd have been alive when Jesus was, then you wouldn't have even. His brothers, everybody, he ain't Jesus, he's a Messiah, he ain't nothing but a carpenter, that's my brother. In Nazareth, hometown, couldn't get nothing done, because, oh, that's just Jesus, that's, that's, jo man, that's Joseph and Mary's son, he ain't nothing but a carpenter. Couldn't get nothing done in his hometown, that's how I feel like that, I'm, I'm from Houston, I go back to Houston, yeah, people think, yeah, yeah, it just, you know. What my point is, is that Jesus came and said, this is what's going to happen to you. Now it's getting ready to happen. Ooh, I like it when Jesus tell me he's going to do something. Then it get ready to happen. Then it happen. Woo! That's how we're going to look when we get to heaven. Woo! I don't want to tell you too much because some of y'all go out here in 441 and run in front of a truck. But when you, when you die, you're going to go, woo! Man! Hey, Jimmy, boy, that's you. I know. Boy, I remember. Look at you. Boy, we're going to be looking so good. I'm going to have hair just like you, Jimmy. I'm going to have hair. I'm going to have all this. You, we're going to have all of this. My point is, now it's getting ready to go down. I'm almost done. Now, I know I'm out of time, but you, you stay with me. Watch it. Watch it. But he took, so now, 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 this guy, Luke, who wrote the gospel of Luke, he is saying now, he's right, he said, now I'm going to tell you all this stuff 
that I, you start telling you in the book of Luke, but, but some other stuff happened after that. Watch what happened. Remember now, they saw Jesus after he was crucified. He was crucified on the cross. They saw it. Mary, his mom, oh, God. All this stuff happened, people. And folks said, man, we had depended on this Jesus. And he done gone and got himself killed. What we going to do now? That's what we do. That's what we do. We see the word. We hear the word. And then when stuff happens, oh, my God, it's all over. Man, man, they rioting in the street. We got the coronavirus. It's all over. Oh, God, I didn't know it was going to happen like this. Come on, man. Come on, man. That's, how, that's a football term they use. Well, come on, man. They're like, can you re uh, really? Really? I mean, really? <laughs> come on, man. So watch what Luke going on say. Whew. Verse 5 in Acts 1 says, For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. He had told them, and wait, let me go on, let me go on. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, uh, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? That's what we do. We ask all kind of crazy questions. Earthly stuff. Our concerns be on earthly stuff. See, what the Holy Spirit does, uh, let, let, I'm going to show you in a minute. Let me not go there yet. And he said to them, it's not for you to know. Times and see or seasons which the Father has put in his own. Ain't your business. Don't worry about it. But you shall, whoa, help me, Holy Spirit. Now listen, folks, if y'all been asleep all this other time, wake up right about now. Wake up right about now. What's that next verse? Sir, y'all help me. I'm, 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 I'm. I'm a touch of death. What, 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 what I'm getting ready to say, but you shall what? Receive power of the Holy Spirit. But you shall receive what? Power. Dynamo. dynamo. The, the word dynamo in there. It means you going to get some power when this thing come on you. Thank you. When this person come on you. When he comes. See, Jesus said, I ain't going to leave you comfortless. I'm, I'm going to ask the Father. He going to send you somebody just like me. The only difference is you want me looking at him like this, he going to be in you. Woo! He said, you shall receive what? Power. Boy, ain't nothing make me more sick than see a powerless Christian. Oh, all we can do is just pray at this point. You should have been praying all along. All we can do is pray. All you can do is pray. You, you feel with the Holy Spirit. He said you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit. Do you, to be a Christian, you can't even live this life as a Christian without the Holy Spirit. It's too hard. You can't do it. You can't walk this out. We get saved and we think, oh, well, I'm holy now. We speak a few scriptures and we... We don't cuss as much. We still cuss, but not much. Yeah. We said people say, "Well, I don't drink much as I used to drink." Uh, yeah, I tried to stop smoking, but that didn't work either. But it don't matter. They ain't, they ain't got nothing to do with nothing. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. You can't pull it off in the flesh. You can't love in the flesh. Cause when people make you mad, woo. I tell you a thing or two. He said, but you'll have power to love them anyway. You're going to have power. He said, wait in Jerusalem until you get what I promised you. I told you it was going to come. He was going to come. You wait in Jerusalem. Don't go nowhere now. Don't go to Mount Dory and all this other stuff. He said, wait in Jerusalem until he comes. Well, he had to worry about him anyway because we're going to see him now. They were, they were scared anyway. They were, they were hiding anyway. Oh, they were bold when, Chris, when Jesus was with them. Soon as Jesus disappeared, Peter, oh, I don't know him. Huh? They were in the boat one day. Waves came. Water getting in the boat. Jesus snoring. <sighs> Wake up! Don't you care, man? He said, look, man, I told you we were going to the other side. They were always scared. They would come across demons. They would joke a field with demons. They man, ain't going near them. They ain't messing with him. Always scared. Jesus' disciples were always scared. Even when he was with them. That's why they wanted to go. Jesus was their hero. He said, but you 
will receive power. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. I ain't scared no more. Now, I'm going I'm to finish up here in Acts chapter 2, but I want you to understand something. Them little weak disciples of Jesus were afraid, fearful, everything was going on with them in the flesh. And boy, watch what's getting ready to happen now. See, he knew. He knows your frame and mind. He knows us. He knows what we're going through in America. In fact, I'm, not, I'm telling you, not only does God knows it, he allows it. Satan can't do nothing. God says, okay. God letting this go. Yes, America, because you turn your backs on me. My people wake up, call. My people turn their backs. Everything's nice now. You can watch what you want to watch. You can eat what you want to eat. We can drink. We spoiled. So we allow stuff to creep in that's against God. And we Christians say, well, I don't think we ought to mess with that. <laughs> oh, if we elect the right people, they'll take care of you crazy. <laughs> Ain't no human being alive you can elect to do this stuff. This Holy Spirit stuff. This, this godly stuff. This the power. He said, you shall receive power. When? When the Holy Spirit come upon you. Isn't that what it said? Man, I don't even know why I'm in John. I'm lost. Y'all got to help me now. Jesus, help me. Help me, help me, Lord. Now, watch what he said. And then, you know, they went through this whole thing and they start talking about, oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. But you shall receive, that's verse 8, power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria. And to See, we like that. Oh, that's the Great Commission. We're going to go do it. You don't even know where to start. <laughs> He said, you're going to receive power. Part of that power is the desire to see people saved. Part of that power is to recognize and discern when things are all messed up. See it in the spirit realm. He's saying, I'm going to help you see in the spirit realm. You, you can't, you, we live in two worlds, people. Sure, I sit and watch CNN. I see what's going on. I can live there. I see it in the spirit he said, you'll receive this power when the world come upon you. And you're going to be able to go do all these things that sounds too scary. It is dangerous. And you say, oh, it's just, it, yeah, I'm just doing what God told me. Because you'll be on fire to go do God's will. See, that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about not going to church. We're going to we power to, to affect change in this world. We're talking about the, the, the church and the, these little weak, little old Followers of Jesus, they can't, ain't, ain't qualified to be disciples yet. Watch what happened. I'm going to finish now, okay? Whew. 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 Thank you, Lord. My heart's beating so fast, I got to slow it down. He said in verse 9, Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in a white apparel who said, in a white apparel, in white apparel, who also said, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into the heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into, he into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go to heaven. Man, some of this stuff in here. You know you can't understand the Bible unless the Holy Spirit reveal it to you. People say, I read the Bible cover to cover. Every year I read 66, 66, 66 books of the Bible. I know that you don't know nothing. You just read. And then between reading and studying and letting the Holy Spirit interpret and show you that stuff. And we preachers, we up here preaching our hearts. Huh? You go, oh, that was a good service. Are you crazy? First of all, you're now responsible for what God just had us give you. And he wants you to do something with it. Huh? Huh? And he's giving you the power to do something with it. 
Boy, I'm telling you, you get serious with God. You let Holy Spirit, you get, I ain't got time to do all that today. But one of these days we're going to teach on praying and speaking in tongues. I don't want to scare some of y'all. Christian gets scared. You need your tongue. He says, I want to throw no tongue. Let's get that. I don't know what they said anyway. I'm just a little old Christian. Let me go. I'm, I'm getting to chapter two. They went on to went on talking about how they replaced Judas, and, and that's, that's a whole different story. Judas, they had to replace Judas, and then you know they picked uh, they picked somebody else, Matthias. To, but then chapter two, he said, "But when the day of Pentecost had come, had fully come, they were all together on one accord in one place. There's unity in the body. There was they were all together in one place. One reason they were together in one place because they were scared to be around other people." Jesus gone. They forgot everything he told them. They forgot. Fear will make you forget everything. That's why in the military, they just drill it in you. You don't even think. You just do it. Next thing you know, you overcome whatever that obstacle was. You just doing it. Ain't nobody in their right mind can run six, seven, eight miles. Hey, we were doing it all the way home. And you may have forgot about what you're doing. You just, yeah, you just power. You're doing it. <laughs> You with me? You see what I'm saying? So, so, so Jesus trying to get them to understand. Look at here. He said, "Listen, they were all together on one, one accord in the one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. They were in that upper room because they were scared. Jesus is gone. He's been crucified. He's gone, and now they said we ain't got no protection. They forgot everything he had taught them, and they were in that room, and all of a sudden." Hoo, hoo, Fire. Woo! On the head. And they begin to speak in other tongues. And they begin to talk. All kind of people were there. They, and they begin, and then this one was doing that. They go, oh my God, what's going on here? They were filled with the Holy Spirit. It came out, woo! The song they had on, the, he said, fall fresh on me. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. See, in our lives, we need to be saying, come, Holy Spirit. Blow on me. Blow on me. Come in like a minor rushing wind and just blow on me and make me something I need to be, not like I used to be. Woo, it hit him. And everybody, all them people from all the different, they heard the gospel preached in their own tongue. Oh! 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 They out of their mind. They drunk. They drunk. They drunk. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. How he know about it? He must have been drunk, man. He, he don't ain't nobody drunk for him. Yeah, he, he drunk. They drunk. They drunk. And Peter said, look at man, let me tell you, this story ain't even open. They can't get no look at this time of day. What you're saying ain't they ain't drunk. They filled with the Holy Spirit. And when that Holy Spirit came on them, boy, let me tell you something. Woo! Y'all, y'all saw, y'all, y'all, some of y'all young, y'all remember Michael Jackson. And Michael Jackson. He, he, some of y'all remember in the 80s, they had a thing called a thriller. And them dead people got up. I like to, I like to do that when I preach on, on the dry bones, but, but, and when they got out here, they come up on the grave, they go, Woo! They, yeah, Holy Spirit filled them. And they was on so much fire, they couldn't even keep still. They couldn't stay still. They couldn't be what they were. They were no longer afraid. They didn't care what people thought. They didn't care what people, they just go, hey, look at him, man, do you know Jesus? Mm, you need to know Jesus. He died for your sin. Do you know that he was crucified, but he got up? Do you know he loved you? Do you know that no matter what you've done, he, he died for your sin? Woo! Woo! He goes to, he goes, see, Christian, we scared to do that. We get scared to go up to homeless people. He said, look at that, man. Man, I'm almost, look at that, man, I'm going to tell you about Jesus. I ain't got no money, but I'm going to tell you about Jesus. You smell it, man. I'm like, no, I don't care about that. I'm going to tell you about Jesus. That's Holy Spirit. That's power. He gives the power. You forget about the fear. You forget about the stuff you're going to encounter. You forget about everything, but you want to please him. 
like preacher was reading. Man, they got so crazy, they started giving, selling and giving away their stuff. Giving to each other. <laughs> no, no, don't come to my closet. Don't come to them. Start giving away out of stuff, selling the stuff, and they made sure everything was met in the kingdom. Why? There's unity in the body. When we begin to pray and seek God, when we begin to operate in His Holy Spirit, things change. The only reason things haven't changed in this country is because we ain't got serious about it. Huh? But guess what? It can begin today, right here in this place, just as they were. Filled with the Holy Spirit. He's in you right now. If you saved, if you honestly saved and gave your life to Jesus Christ, he is just like God was with, walked with his people through the prophets in the Old Testament. And just like Jesus in the flesh dwelt among us. See what John meant when he said, he said, listen, I, I ain't even worthy. He said, I come to baptize with water for repentance. But in Acts, Jesus poured out his Holy Spirit. He said, I baptize with fire. See, fire do stuff in you. Fire do stuff. Fire cook your food. Fire, fire burn you if you get too close. It burn my hair off, right? Whew. I was at Lampoon one day. They went, woof. Fire. Fire make you move. Fire make you move in a hurry. Fire motivates. See the Holy Spirit, people. If you're here today and you're a born again believer, he's in you. Oh, I'm going to pray for you in a little bit and just ask that you let him do his thing. Now, don't get scared. Don't get scared. Don't get scared. If I lay hands on you, and you begin to, I'm about to shit and I begin to speak in other tongues. Don't worry about it. Because, see, sometimes we're going to have to pray in the spirit. Because he said in the natural, we don't even know what to pray for. But because the Holy Spirit's in you, you can start praying in the spirit. You don't know what you're dealing with. you already talking to God about something that happened way down there in Texas or something. And God, well, Holy Spirit is doing it. And the next thing you know, people don't got, act like they got sins. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Said he gave away all the stuff. Preacher, you didn't even know I was going to preach on, on Acts 2. He didn't know. We don't talk. We didn't talk about this stuff. Only God knew. And by his Holy Spirit, he bring unity. There's power in unity. There's power in unity. There's power in unity. There's power in it. And Holy Spirit has given us what we need. All we got to do is let him do his thing. Would you stand with me? Let's, let's just go and close this thing now. Stand with me if you will. Let, 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 let's just stand because see, 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 I could go on for hours, but I ain't going to do that. I just do what Holy Spirit, he's in control. And I want you to understand right where you stand. I want you to understand today. I'm going to pray in a little bit. I'm going to pray for you now. Now, some of you say, man, I don't know what that's like. I'll tell you what you do. I'm going to tell you what you do now. You can stay where you are or if some of you want to come up here, I'll lay hands on you. I'm going to tell you right now. God wants you, the Holy Spirit, to come alive in your life. That you begin to, you ain't no ordinary Christian. When you get here, when the Holy Spirit take over, uh-uh, uh-uh. You'll stop all this crazy stuff. You'll stop, and you know what? I, that's another day, another time, another day. I'm so tired, I get so tired. Christian judging people, judging, judging, judging. God, take some of that foolishness away from you. Because that's all it is, foolishness. But when you let the Holy Spirit have his way in you, you acknowledge his presence. You'll begin to have a boldness that you didn't have before. You'll begin to stuff that used to worry you. You'll blow that stuff out the window. Huh? Are you hearing me? Man, I remember my wife started listening to and following Priscilla Shira uh, for about a year and a half now. And the stuff that used to bother her. Poof, poof, okay, whatever. Enemy send you bad news in the mail. Oh, you owe sixty million dollars to the IRS. You said, Puh, whatever. Doctor come out and tell you you got cancer. Oh yeah, okay, whatever. We can't help you. I don't expect you to help me. I got a savior who said that by his stripes I'm healed. Yeah, but 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 I, your your body said you crazy man. We feel sick. You be see you you healed. But what if he don't heal me? Then I'll see him in heaven. Huh? 
I'm healed. Either here or there. I'm healed. Are you hearing me? They said, boy, that, that pastor still crazy. Yeah, they tell me I got chemo. I told my wife, look here, they ain't had their chemo. I ain't want it. I don't want it. But suppose you die. Jesus, man, that's so cool. Woo-hoo. I got me a new truck. I love it. It's so fun, so much fun. New red truck. I get to heaven, won't need no truck. I just think of it, I'm there. You know, I think I'll, I think I'll go to Egypt today. Boop. Holy Spirit. See, that's the power of the unity in the body of Christ. We fill with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to pray now today. You stay where you are. If you want to come forward, that's fine. But I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit come alive in your life today. As the preacher was talking, he, you know, you, we, we, I went to church. No, I went filled. I went and got filled and fresh. I got a fresh anointing. Now I can do what God called me to do. Woo! Now I didn't know what God wanted me. Now I see it. Father, we thank you and we praise you today. In the name of Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, the Redeemer. Woo! Your son, the same one, Lord, that you said you would sin. And he came and he died. But he died that we may have the power that you promised, Lord. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, as I pray and as I touch, and, and as I as I touch, and Lord, and as I wave my hand, at those who have never felt the power of Your Holy Spirit, fill them right now in the name of Jesus, all over this place. Fill them, Lord. Fill them, Lord. Give them a fresh outpouring and anointing. Fill them, Lord. Let them feel Your Holy presence and by Your Holy Spirit. Fill them, Lord, like, like, like the flames on the day of Pentecost. Just fill them with your spirit, Lord. Let them feel them uh, rise up in them, Lord, so that everything they touch and everything they do, Lord, it will be so, the world will know that they will feel but the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Pour out your spirit on us, Lord. We don't want to be ordinary. We don't want to be go to church Christian. We want to be filled with your spirit. We want the power, Lord, that you promised and you've given it to us. We just receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, fill, blow, blow, pour out your blow on them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, pour it out, Lord. Woo, Lord. We want to be a people to change a nation. Look in the New Testament. We want to turn it upside down. No more of this weak Christian walking. No more of this, oh, I think I might do this. I, no, Lord, your will be done and not mine. Whew, thank you, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Be glorified. Move by your spirit, Lord. We receive it, Lord. We receive it, Lord. We receive it. Thank you now, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we receive it. We receive it, Lord. We receive him in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God bless you, God. God bless you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Lord, Rabbi Shana.